All right. Welcome, everyone, to our ICD-10 webinar. This is a follow-up webinar to our ICD-10 series where we're going to specifically talk about some code import options. So the reason why we're holding this webinar today is because the common question that we're getting, the most common question is, does Metasoft version 20 come with the ICD-10 codes preloaded? And the answer to that question is no, but the good news is we do have options available. I'm going to review first some of the tools that we talked about previously, one of which is the ICD-10 mapping tool. So if you remember from the previous webinars, the ICD-10 mapping tool is going to look at the existing ICD-9 codes in Metasoft and then using the GEM, the general equivalency mappings that were produced by CMS, it's going to recommend either one-to-one -one or one-to-multiple mappings for ICD-10 based off of ICD-9 codes that exist in your system today. So. When I talked about it before, I described the GEMS as a good start and the mapping tool as a good start, um, but pointed out that it might not be enough. So today we're going to do a little bit deeper dive into that statement, why it might not be enough. And besides just mentioning that we have add-on products such codes on, as Codes on Disk and Encoder Pro, we're actually going to do a deep dive into showing you how those can help fill in the gaps. So why are the GEMS a good start? Why do we describe it that way? It's simply because not all codes map or are included in the GEMS. If we remember or in learning about why the GEMS were developed, um, the primary purpose for their development it was because we need to be able to compare and convert data. So they really act as a, as a translation tool for codes, almost like when you have, a, you know, English and Spanish, there's not always a, a direct translation um, for anything. So the gems were something that came up, were produced as a way for our, on a, on a high level to compare data before and after this ICD-10 conversion. And keep in mind that uh, the reality of ICD-10 is they were developed because they were more specific, gave us a lot more information. So if everything truly was a one-to-one -one match, there would not be any need for ICD-10 code. So it's never going to be a perfect scenario when we're moving from ICD-9 to ICD-10. So I want to look back and review some of the ICD-10 features that we talked about in the very first webinar. It's easy to see when you look at the features uh, why the code set is expanding so drastically and also to identify in some scenarios it might be easy to find a one-to-one -one match or one-to-multiple, like laterality, if there was one code that is now just describing left, right, or bi bilateral, then, then it, there would be an easy mapping to multiple codes for that. But there are some new scenarios or new features that, that are specific to ICD-10. Combination codes, for example, where we associate symptoms and manifestations to diseases. So this is one of the biggest areas that makes it complicated um, for ICD-10 because what used to be, you know, multiple codes in, in ICD-9 are now just one code in ICD-10, for example. So, and then, and then in addition, there's all new concepts that are introduced or obviously getting more specific as we get into the code. So just to review that, it helps us to understand a little bit why the gems are not always going to produce the code that you need. So I'm going to give a more specific example of breaking that out. So if we were to look at a combination code, for example, in ICD-10, um, we have a code for Crohn's disease of the large intestine with intestinal obstruction. One code that is describing both the disease and the manifestation. In ICD-9, how we would have coded that, we would have had a primary code for regional entritis of large intestine, and then we would have had a secondary code of unspecified intestinal obstruction. So again, before we would have done that as two, and then today we would do that as one code under the combination codes. So if we were to look at the way that the GEMS would translate those two codes that we used before, you can see when I pull it up that under IC9, this 555.1, 5 
It does have a general equivalency mapping that was suggested by CMS, but it's still um, it's still almost a more general mapping, Crohn's disease of large intestine without complication. And then we also have the, um, the unspecified intestinal obstruction that also has an ITD-10 code, but what is not produced in this scenario is the combination code. There is no suggestion of when these, co when these two, uh, when this manifestation exists with this, this disease how we would come, how we would um, code that as a combination. So it's not, the gems are not going to um, create, or the mapping tool is not going to create the new code that you would use if you were using that combination code. So um, there was a great quote on the AHIMA. They had an article about putting the ICD-10 gems into practice, and they, they simply pointed out that, that the gems are going to, um, be used to link code sets to give you know the closest equivalent, but they the gems are not going to be enough to they they don't have all the information that a provider or coder might have in front of them that is specific to that patient encounter. Um, so there is going to be some knowledge and some medical decision making about what when it's appropriate to use a combination code. So. So there are, I've done a little bit of research and there's some coder beware <laughs> messages that are out there. Um, under ICD-10 guidelines, multiple codes should not be used when you clearly have a combination code that identifies all the elements in the diagnosis. So even though, you know, you might have those two codes still have a, an equivalent code in ICD-10, again, because they're not combining that into one to um, express in one code both the, the disease and the manifestation or the symptom, it would not be appropriate to use those two separate codes any longer when you could use one code uh, for that specific patient scenario. Um, another warning was that defaulting to unspecified ICD-10 codes could lead to non-coverage if or when insurers stop paying for services that could be reasonably be better defined. So, and I know there's been a lot of information out there about supporting documentation and the need for specificity in documentation. So those are all kind of things that lead to um, better need for better coding under ICD-10 and the fact that the gems might not be enough for, for your practice. This is just a great reminder that uh, you really shouldn't rely on the coding tools alone to replace proper training. So there are lots of courses out there that are available um, to for coding specific training for your specialties. You can even start with uh, road to ICD10.org that CMS has out. They've got some information on training for ICD10 for specific specialties. But this is just a little reminder that coders should have training on anatomy, physiology, and etiology of diseases in order to, in order to even know how to, like you need to make sound queries to be able to find the right code or to distinguish between conditions that are typically related and to recognize scenarios in which one condition might cause another manifestation or symptom. So one of the biggest challenges that's recognizable is that you've got to know that a combination code even exists out there. So, and again, if you're solely relying on just the mapping tool, you can see that the mapping tool is going to, going to find like a general equivalent to that code. But again, if the combination code might be available that's more specific to your patient scenario, then knowing that that code exists is going to be one of the challenges that you have. So what should a coder ask? Um, when, when you're presented with multiple codes for a patient, it, it would be wise to look in, and ask, are the processes linked and what is the root cause for that? So we do have add-on options that are available that will help you to fill in the gaps for the gem. So one of those is the product codes on disk, and another one is called Encoder Pro. Both of these products are going to help you to populate your, your diagnosis library of ICD-10 codes within Metasoft. 
and I'm going to talk about the features and benefits about for each of them, and we'll do a little bit deeper dive into how they might help you so you can know which one's appropriate for your practice, and in some cases, you might need both. Starting with codes on disk, this is codes on disk does run independently outside of Metasoft. So this is the screen when you open up codes on disk that you'll get. You can see that it does contain more than just ICD codes. It is also going to include your CPT or your procedure codes, as well as a procedure code manager as well. And we'll talk about. Um, I, I will mention or cover those benefits as well for you. But specifically, we'll just start with if you were a um, new practice to Metasoft and you had no codes in your database at all, then Codes on Disk is obviously a great place to start because you can import bulk codes um, in a fairly quick process. You can import the codes that you need into your database. It's also appropriate if you are an existing user and maybe you haven't updated your codes for a while, uh, that you want to fill in the gaps for all the new codes, or maybe you've even added a new provider to your practice that has a different specialty or anything like that. Anytime that you want to add co codes in bulk to your database, then Codes on Disk is a really good solution to help you do that. Um, in this example, it, if you were to click on this ICD-10 button to indicate, hey, I want to add new ICD-10 codes to my system, I'll show you how that works. So one thing that another benefit of the codes on disk is that it allows you to import codes into specific practices. So instead of going into, e if you are a billing service, for example, and you have multiple practices that you bill for, Instead of going into each and every one of those databases and trying to build out the diagnosis codes, you can you can bulk import into each of your databases that you want to add codes to. This screen will present itself asking you which database you want to add the codes to, and then you would just select the appropriate one and hit next to move on. At that point, you're going to be presented with the entire library of codes. In this scenario, again, I chose ICD-10, so I'm getting every ICD-10 code available to me. You do have the option of importing all the codes into Metasoft. You also have the option of deselecting. You can hit the deselect all and then just search for, maybe you have a, a super bill or something like that, a list of common diagnoses for your practice. You can search for those and just check them off. And then again, import all those in one bulk uh, time into the system. You can search by the code or by the description. Um, one of the things to note is that if you are searching by description and as you import these codes into Metasoft, they are going to have the standard description like you would have in your coding book. So that is one of the things to recognize is that, again, sometimes we might call or describe something either with an acronym or a different phrase. Um, and however these codes are built in here with the, the standard descriptions that there are is how they will be built into your system. You can always edit the descriptions or things like that afterwards. But I'm making that point because when we look at Encoder Pro, we do get a little bit more search capability with that. So. After selecting the code, you can you have the option if you're going to merge and overwrite or, or merge and not overwrite. So this will allow you, again, if you have codes already in your system, to merge new codes into the system based off of the items that you select. And then once you do that, the codes are automatically going to be created for you within a matter of seconds. You can open up Metasoft and it will be populated with all the new codes. I grabbed one of them that was imported and just to edit it and show you. Uh, one more point to make is that if you are using this tool, then it is not going to include any mapping with it. So if I add the ICD-10 codes, it is not going to include any type of mapping back to ICD-9 for you. Okay? So you would these codes would either need to be edited if you wanted to add any type of mapping, um, or you're just you would just only use them if you were billing ICD-10 only. It has been suggested by some that because you can also import the IC9 codes, you could import the IC9 codes first. 
use the general the the mapping tool that's available in MetaSoft to create all of your ICD-10 codes, and then you could come back and create your ICD-10 codes to fill in any of the blanks for codes that might not have a mapping um, for them. So that way you would end up with you know ICD-10 codes that have mappings available to them and then it would fill in any of the additional ones um, that didn't have a mapping available. Some of the other benefits of codes on disk is that it also again includes all of your CPT um, codes and HCPCS codes as well. So you can also use that product if you have a new database and you want to import all the procedure codes that your practice uses. You can do that as well, and you can see that as you do that, it does allow you to key in the amount and the cost fields for you. So almost a little bit easier to, again, do it in bulk, key in all of your information just in a grid instead of editing those one by one to add in the cost and everything else. So it will help you create your procedure codes as well. And then for existing users, another benefit is there is a procedure code manager option within the product as well. So what this will do is if you're using the procedure code manager, it will look at all the codes that you already have in your system for procedures, and it will show you all this amount and information, and there is a, even a handy little tool that allows you to increase your pricing. So if it's time for your practice to increase pricing, you can select to increase it by a specific dollar amount or to increase it by a percentage um, and even round up to the nearest dollar if you need to. So that's a little overview of codes on disk and some of the benefits that it has for you. Again, it's a great tool if you're trying to just almost like dump a, the library, like the library of codes into your system. Um, so that you don't have to rekey them or anything else. The other option that we have for you is called Encoder Pro. Um, I like to describe codes on disk as a great way to kind of build your library in bulk. Encoder Pro, where it really excels, is that you do build it more on a one-on-one -on -one basis, so it will still build your library within Metasoft. But it's almost like your diagnosis list is going to have just the diagnosis that you actually use. And then Encoder Pro is always available to you as a search engine of every available diagnosis, which will allow you to then, once you find a diagnosis in Encoder Pro, just import that one diagnosis. So it's not really a tool that you're going to use to bulk build a library. But again, if you already have used the, the you've already got you know, your ICD-9s, you've used the, the tool to create the mappings for ICD-10, and you want to fill in the blanks, then Encoder Pro would be a great choice for that. So, and it does handle more than just diagnosis. It, it also, likewise, allows you to build procedure codes. It has the whole library for that as well. So this one does not launch outside of Metasoft. It actually launches from it with inside Metasoft when you install it. If you're going to add a new diagnosis, then it adds a new button for Encoder Pro. Or again, if you're adding a new procedure, it adds a new button for Encoder Pro so that you can search the library from there as well. So when you launch Encoder Pro from within either one of those screens, then the search screen will come up. One of the benefits in here is that you can search using multiple terms to find the same code. So you're not stuck with just the description that um, you know the one set description where you're kind of trying to guess how they, what they called it. Um, like in this example, I typed in HTN for hypertension, and I searched and I found all the codes that were relative to hypertension. Um, so it, it has a, a more sophisticated search capability. The other thing that you'll see in this is instead of buying a coding book where it might take me I don't even know how long to thumb through the book to try to find a section on hypertension when it might be found in several different sections. Just one simple search, it's like when you search on Google, it tells you how many seconds it took to find all these options for you. It's exactly how Encoder Pro works. One simple search will pull up all the available options for you. So it really does, and it does replace the coding book because it gets you a lot more information than just the description of the code. 
some of that information is it does include instructional notes. So in your coding books, it will it has these same instructional notes like um, what things it excludes or additional information. You can see when you select a code, you can click on this little button up here to see the instructional notes for those codes um, that give you further clarification of terms, additional digit information, so on and so forth. Another feature is that it does have a color coding and symbol system that's included in, in the product as well. So when you select a code, you might find um, one or more, um, if there are any available, little alerts for you that help you, um, that help coders to know important information that's related to reimbursements that might, um, you know, you, that might affect your reimbursements based on the code that you're signing for that patient. And there is a little legend that kind of shows you. So we'll, for example, if you select a code that requires additional characters or, um, you know, if it's a new diagnosis code or it should only be used for um, pediatrics or things like that, then those little alerts will pop up for you. Another benefit of this is when you select a code, like if I selected this ICD-10 code, at the top of the screen, there is this the, the mapping tool. So if you click, if I've selected a 10 code and I click on 9, then it's going to bring up the gems for me. And they actually include both the gems and mappings um, produced by Optimum, which is their, tech, their clinical technical expert. So another mapping tool essentially is available to you. Both of those are available to you. So what that will do is, you can actually assign um, which diagnosis code would be appropriate to be mapped with this particular diagnosis that you're selecting. So there is some clinical decision um, that is made at that level, which is an awesome feature. So once you select the code that you want to map it to, and all that information is down in this lower um, left-hand corner, then you would select OK, and that will actually build the code in Metasoft. So unlike, you can see that there's, a, there's a really a lot more advantages if you're trying to find a code or locate an appropriate code by using Encoder Pro because it really does replace your coding books. Um, if you remember back to those original questions of, you know, what's the primary diagnosis, are any of these related, you could go into Encoder Pro and look for the primary diagnosis, and then you would actually see, you could start narrowing down to see if there might be a combination code available for you that has some of those manifestations for the other diagnosis codes that you might have been presented to Bill. And then when you pull that in, you get to make the decision about what mappings are available. So it will not only create your ICD-10 code, but it will allow you to choose the ICD-9 code that you want mapped to that 10 code. So if you are trying to learn ICD-10, you know, ahead of the curve and even start using these in your billing today, then Encoder Pro will really assist you in that way as well. So I'm actually going to, um, before we end this, I'm going to give you a little demo of the of the two products right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up codes on disk so you can see I am launching it outside of the program. Oh, let me pull it over here. So this is how it launches. And again, here's my different screen. So if I'm going to choose ICD-10 and I'm going to choose to do select all, I'm going to put all codes is my library that I'm using, and then I can select which practice I'm going to put that in. Then this is where my screen is going to come up, and you can either select all codes and then merge them all in, or you have the option of, or you have the option of deselecting them, and then you can see you can actually search by uh, which codes you might want to do. So those are kind of two different ways that you can you can do that. And then once you've selected that, you're going to go ahead and hit the, once you've got the code that you want to import, you'll hit that merge option. And then either do the merge and override or the merge and no override. So I'm going to go ahead and actually cancel that for a moment. And I should have pointed out there are some more advanced um, search options if you're just trying to 
you know, look for maybe a partial name or, or anything like that, there are some more advanced search options in here. I'm going to go back to that menu as well and just show you, again, you have that same functionality under CPT. You can choose if you're going to do the CPT or the HIC HIC codes, um, and then which practice you're going to import those into, and you have that same ability to either select all or to search for maybe specific codes that you're trying to build into the system. Um, and then you would do the same thing of, of merging those in and, and then send it out right on. I should have also pointed out, you can kind of key in right as you're building your codes, you know, what your pricing might be for those. So it makes it a little bit easier, again, than just building them one by one. And then back on the menu, that last one is your procedure code manager. So you can select whichever uh, database you're using. That's going to pull up all of your available codes in the system where you can either edit that code um, to change pricing or information, or you can use that little pricing tool down here to say, hey, go ahead and increase my code amount by maybe 10%, round it to the nearest dollar, and and then that will go through and increase your pricing for you. Um, and that's that's really it. So that's, that's our codes on disk. Again, biggest benefit is it's a really simple tool to kind of build your library quickly within Metasoft. Um, but some things to obviously be aware of is that it's going to just give you that one description for you to, to search by. And it is not going to include any type of mapping within inside that tool. So the other thing I'm going to show you a demo of Encoder Pro now. We open up Metasoft. I'm going to start by just giving us a scenario to show you how the mapping tool would work and how Encoder Pro can help you, help you fill in some of those combination codes. So if my provider gave me, for example, I'm used to billing maybe three different codes to describe a patient that has a toxic liver, they have chronic active hepatitis, and they have ascites, then those three separate codes may currently exist in my system today. And if I went to my tools, and I went to services, and I went to create IC10 mappings, you could see that under the one-to-one -one mappings, I may find two of those, for example toxic liver and ascites, and then under my other mapping, I would find unspecified hepatitis. So those might be the three codes that I use today. But you can see that if I, on the other two, there's just a simple one-to-one -one mapping, and under this one-to-multiple mappings, I'm still not finding it give me a combination code that would describe a patient that has all three. They're, they're really just giving me more of the general equivalency. Um, which is, again, what the GEMS were designed for, right, to find a, the, a close match, but, again, not necessarily taking into account everything that might be happening with that patient. So if I went ahead and created those, those general um, ic 10 codes would be loaded into my system. And I'll go ahead and just say create selected codes, and, and then we're going to close out of there. So if I go into my diagnosis code list now, and then, again, thinking back, if I were presented those three codes, if I were to find maybe the primary diagnosis that I would do, I might want to check and see if there might be a combination code available to me. So I'm going to go ahead and click New to create a new diagnosis code. And then I'm going to go ahead and launch Encoder Pro here. So when Encoder Pro launches, I will, I'll just type in liver here just to give me a general, and you can see you can search either ICD-9 or ICD-10. I'll just have it search just for my ICD-10. So I might find all my possible um, liver options available to me. And then you can see there is one here for my toxic liver. So I could narrow it down with that. And then I could also say, well, I know that they also have that chronic acute hepatitis. So I can select that, and then this will tell me again that, hey, if you select this code, it's actually going to require another character because that's not specific enough. And then on the right-hand side, or either you know by pushing the plus over here, we'll expand those codes. I can see um, narrowing it down to the specific codes that I'm looking for. 
and again, some of those tools up there, if you were to click on, you can see that it would pull up um, some of that additional information of what it might exclude um, or information that would be available um, to me that might affect my reimbursements would also be displaying for me as well, such as that I need an additional character. And then you can see in the additional options that are available to me that there is one that, that describes all three of those conditions together. So that would be the appropriate code that I would want to actually be billing with. The nice thing about that is once I've selected that code, I can click on the 9 button up here, and it will, if there is one, suggest what it would have been billed under under ICV-10 to some extent, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click map for that so that I can now add that code into my system. And you can see once it populates into my system that it is filling out those different fields for me, however you want to have them filled out. Okay, and then I can go ahead and save that. And I guess I've already done that scenario before, so that does exist in my system right now. But that's how the the Encoder Pro can actually help you to supplement the general equivalency mappings that are available to you in that toolbook or again or in the IC10 mapping tool or again if you're brand new to the practice, then that would also allow you to just kind of build your library as you're going. So if you didn't have any codes in your system, you could still use Encoder Pro. Um, either alongside codes on disk as a, as a tool that replaces your coding book or as a way of building that library um, within Metasoft as you go. So I hope you've enjoyed the webinar today. Hopefully that answered some of the additional questions that you were having regarding the tools that are available to you to build your ICD-10 libraries within Metasoft. Uh, we appreciate your feedback and the time that you've spent with us. If you do have additional questions, please call us at 877-544-4433. You can also, again, visit us at our blog, ascom.com forward slash blog, where you can subscribe to any tips and tricks that we might be putting out or industry news so that you can stay informed both on things that are happening on the Metasoft level, like tools that we have available to help you with all the changes that are occur occurring in the billing world, as well as you know options for EHR and things like that. Um, love to have you subscribe so we can keep in touch. Thanks again for joining us today.